Trash Talk with Nissan. Let's go the distance by keeping our distance. Nissan, innovation that excites. Now it's a pleasure to welcome editor of Travel Extra, Owen Corry, and our resident south of Spain correspondent, a man who the Gardaí, sorry, the police have been looking for. Uh, he's been in and out of the water, breaking the law, and he's no less a professor in political science at the School of Law and Government at DCU, but we have disowned him because of his law-breaking. Uh, Owen Corry, we wanted to talk to you to get a view, because we've heard sporadic bits of news, like... Germany saying their travel warning to German citizens is to lift restrictions to all 31 European countries from the 15th of June. Uh, Spain from the 1st of July is dropping any quarantine for two weeks. So give us a picture across Europe of the lifting of the lockdown from a travel perspective. We're virtually alone, Ivan, in keeping a quarantine. There are two or three countries that have a very strict in, um, re, uh, de, uh, regulations on, in, on people moving within the European Union, ourselves, Poland, Slovakia, and of course, Britain, who are uh, just out leaving the European Union or introducing one. Uh, you would not pick that up from the narrative in Ireland, but the rest of Europe is unlocking or unlocked. Okay, from when? Generally, June the 7th, uh, movement within Spain, tourists are welcome after that. June the 17th, uh, most of the other European countries are allowing international uh, people in. And July the 1st is a key date. Uh, July the 1st is when our own Michael O'Leary decided he was going to put 40% of his aircraft in the sky. He didn't wait for any government clearance. Totally characteristic of Michael. And it seems that governments are reacting to this because the Spanish Prime Minister on Saturday and the Foreign Minister yesterday both mentioned July the 1st as the time when they expect um, tourism on its full, in full motion to restart in Spain. Interestingly, Portugal never locked down. Portugal never stopped people coming in. You can still fly from Dublin to Lisbon all through this. And they are unlocking week by week. The key is that they have a, both Spain and Portugal have a program where golf clubs, spas, beaches, uh, hotels, restaurants are all have a schedule. And the idea is that when people get there, everything will be open. The key to uh, the start of travel from Ireland is probably going to be Lanzarote. Huge favourite with the Irish. Very, very clear. Uh, one of the best track records for infections um, in the within the Spanish jurisdiction. Lanzarote and Fuerteventura, I'd expect to open almost immediately. Gran Canaria, Tenerife to follow. The Balearic's not far behind. And <clears throat> tourist regions, and this is important for those people who hold up aviation as the being the culprits in the spread of the virus, the great playgrounds for tourism have very low infection rates. Even Lombardy, which is a very which is a black spot throughout Europe, those beautiful resource listeners will identify with around Lake Garda have the lowest infection rate. Tourist places tend to be clearer of the virus. The real key is whether the local authorities are happy to see tourists coming back. And because it's 10% of GDP across Europe, I suspect that they will be. Just uh, Sarah Ngori asks, we have a family ho holiday booked for the 5th of July to Gran Canaria. Even if Spain do open to tourists in July, will Irish travel restrictions still allow us to go? We're willing to travel. What's the guidance there? The guidance is that June the 18th is when our 14-day quarantine on return is up for grabs. Uh, there's quite a kickback against it coming uh, already in the travel industry. People saying, why are we keeping this when no other country, apart from Britain, about to introduce theirs, uh, have them? Uh, everybody else is lifting theirs. And I'd expect the lobbying on that to increase over the now, between now and June the 18th. You are clear to go and come back. But as it stands, there are two things, two inhibitions. The 20 kilometer restriction, which will be kicking, it will presumably still be in place then. And the 14 day required self-isolation quarantine when you return. They're both Irish regulations. On the Spanish side, everything is clear. Right. Uh, so so that is still up for grabs. OK, Owen O'Malley, uh, what, what, what's the, the visible signs or expectation from the 1st of July in southern Spain where you are? 
Well, it's pretty normal now. Uh, so apart from the fact that people are wearing masks and you have to wear a mask if you go into a shop, uh, apart from that, it feels fairly normal. As of on Monday, as of last Monday, beaches were open in a lot of the places where I am. They're still closed until uh, next Monday. Uh, but the, they're, on the beaches, they're going to have some sort of regimes where there will be no showers on the beaches. You won't be allowed rent, uh, rent uh, the place to things you rely on and things like that will be removed. But, but, Loungers, uh, yeah. It, yeah. It, whatever they are. Uh, it, apart from that, it, it all feels very normal. I was walking in through the city of Cadiz last night and the, place, the city was, the town was packed. There obviously are, it's only locals. There are no tourists here yet. Uh, but it feels normal, and I think the people in Spain are kind of desperate to get Northern European tourists because they they really need the money. And, and is there a sense, you know, like we, we're gripped with this daily press conference of nine deaths today and an extra 36 cases. Is there that sense uh, in Spain of people are still dying, cases are still being confirmed, or is there a say, look, we're going to have to live with this? What, what's the attitude, Owen? It seems yeah. that I mean, if you if you look at way the way it's the curve is going, it's really gone down remarkably quickly. Uh, and as as Owen had just said, the in the south of Spain, where the kind of main tourist areas, there's very few cases. It's a lot lower than say in Madrid. So Madrid is being kept back quite a bit, and international travel to Madrid probably won't happen immediately. But you do, I mean, you do still also have the kind of senior health officials and the Minister for Health are, are on the news every day and are kind of giving out statistics. But I kind of get the impression a lot of people are just bored of it now. And also the news tends to be good. Uh, the death rates have has gone down significantly. There are, new, there are kind of very small outbreaks in some places, but they seem to be under, getting them under control uh fairly quickly. Uh, oh, Kari, um, you know, when we covered this on Friday, uh, the, the question of the, the quarantine, people highlighted countries like Austria where there's an alternative to the quarantine for 14 days, which is that you undergo a test that would take place at the airport, and then if you pass that test, you're exempt from it. Is there any plans here to do something like that? Because the domestic uh, tourism industry is, is in lockdown. Everything is locked down and the problem is that we really haven't got any uh, serious unlocking of tourism until August the 10th. Um, there is <clears throat> the airport uh, restrictions are quite interesting. Uh, we've seen some of the airports introduce, uh, they're not just temperature checks, but th this uh, temperature check thing is very popular in Asia as is the wearing of masks. The ma ma uh, wearing of masks seems to be baked into their behavior over there. But what we've seen in some of the airports here is a full COVID-19 check being introduced by the airport before allowing you to board or before you allow to transfer. It, it appeared in Vienna, as you mentioned. It also appeared in Helsinki. What is of interest, of more than passing interest to people who might be flying uh, through airports that introduce this, is it costs 190 euro and you wait three hours. So it can be a little bit of an imposition. It was also the system that was rejected, as uh, the other Owen might uh, concur, uh, by the Spaniards as not having a high enough accuracy rate. We could have a situation where we are being charged a lot of money for COVID-19 tests in airports that uh, wouldn't really pass international scientific um, uh, <coughs> examination. But there's no introduction or no plan to introduce those in, in Irish airports and in the case of temperature checking which has been flagged by the airlines as a good idea but naturally enough expectedly enough Ryanair are saying we're not going to pay for it and surprise surprise Dublin Airport Authority are also saying we're not going to pay for it who's going to pay for temperature checking at the airport the arrangements in the airport if the numbers start okay. swelling again and remember we've only getting 530 average people an average of 530 a day through the airport if the numbers swell in the airport management in the airport still is, hasn't been okay. finalised. All right, uh, we're out of time. My thanks uh, to, at least he's not in jail, uh, Owen O'Malley uh, from the south of Spain, going where he likes, when he likes, and Owen Corrie, editor of Travel Extra, saying we're a little bit of an outlier in Europe. Oh. The Hard Shoulder on Newstalk with Nissan. 
Together, let's play our part by staying apart. Nissan, innovation that excites.